Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 18.2.1 to the public. iOS 18.2.1 is available around the world at the same time for everyone, as long as you're on an iOS 18 supported device. That means an iPhone SE 3rd generation all the way up to the iPhone 16 Pro and 16 Pro Max. Now if you're on iOS 18.3 betas, you won't see this update as you're on a newer version. We should expect a new update with that soon, we'll talk about that a little bit later. However, if you're on iOS 18.2 or older, you can find this update by going into your settings, go to General, then Software Update, and you should see it there. Then you can install it, and you should be good to go. This particular update came in at 511.7 megabytes on my iPhone 16 Pro Max. It was about the same size on the other devices as well, and this was released alongside iPadOS 18.2.1. We haven't seen any other updates since. Now as far as what's new, first let's take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to Settings, then General, then About. As you can see, the build number is 22C161, and this particular update is not a feature update, but rather a bug fix update. The first thing is, there is no modem update in this update if you're coming from iOS 18.2. On the 16 Pro Max, you'll be on version 1.21.05. As I mentioned, it's not a feature update, but if we go to the install screenshot here, it says the update provides important bug fixes and is recommended for all users. Unfortunately, Apple has been slim on the notes this time around. They're not mentioning specifically what they're fixing, and while we'll have to test this over the next few days, we don't know specifically what they're actually repairing here. This is something Apple really needs to update, and they were pretty good about it with AirPods and other things we've seen before, but for some reason they're not telling us exactly what they've fixed. For example, as far as the stutters, it seems like those are much smoother this time around. Apps are not opening slowly this time, they're opening right up, and going into the camera actually seems like it doesn't go to a blank screen. So it does open right up, works fine. If I put the phone behind it, it's nice and quick to snap a photo. We'll talk about performance in a moment, but in general, it seems like they've fixed quite a few things here. But for whatever reason, they're not specifying it. As far as the wallpaper bug, it seems like it's fixed this time around. It's not oversaturating it from the lock screen to the home screen. Also though, one thing I've noticed is we don't have the wallpapers for iPhone 15. If we go over here and add a wallpaper, you'll see under collections we have iPhone 16 models, but not the iPhone 15 models for whatever reason. So I would love to see them add that back, I know many of you would as well. As far as anything else, well, there are security updates in this update. If we go to our website here where it says Apple security releases and scroll down, Apple actually says this update has no published CVE entries. That doesn't mean they didn't fix something, but they're not letting anyone know if they did. Sometimes they'll update this a few days or weeks later after they've verified there's no additional issues that are security loopholes. And in general, security is usually quite extensive as far as what they've updated, such as iOS 18.2. But again, they haven't given us much notes with this update. Many people have been complaining about the overall performance, battery, and much more, but there are no additional release notes. There was another update the other day I wanted to mention for Fitness Plus where you can try it for three months, and they've added a lot of different things with this. On Apple's Newsroom website, you'll see here they've unveiled an exciting lineup of new ways to stay active and mindful in 2025. I have mentioned this in other videos, but be sure to check it out if you want to use Fitness Plus. Lots of different things, everything from breath meditation to spotlight on music's biggest stars, and much more. In general, the overall performance of this update seems to be pretty good. Now I am only using it on a newer device, I'm at CES this week, and so I don't have everything ready to test, but you'll see here everything looks pretty smooth as far as ProMotion, I've already shown there's no real lag anywhere, and the apps in general seem to be nice and fast, going into things such as music, going into reminders, settings, anything I'm doing seems to be nice and fast, and I really haven't had an issue with it. As far as the overall heat, well, it installed quickly and it stayed nice and cool. Let me show you the overall thermals. And as you can see, the overall temperature of it currently with the thermal camera is about 29 to 30 degrees Celsius. So it's not super warm, especially right after doing an update. It typically heats up quite a bit. So this is good news so far. As far as the overall battery life, it will take a few days to know that for sure. We'll talk about it in the weekend follow-up. But if we go into battery, battery health. This is not my main phone. I have 100% capacity with seven cycles. On my main phone, I run iOS 18.3 betas. 
if we take a look at the battery health here, I have 100% capacity with 95 cycles. And this one is typically getting me through most of the day, but it depends what I'm doing. Today I've used it for two hours and six minutes of screen active time, one hour and 29 minutes of screen idle time, and I'm down to 56%. So it's not that great. It just depends on the day. However, iOS 18.2 seemed to fix a lot of issues for people, but then other people experience the opposite with terrible battery life. So we'll have to give it a few days, see what it's like, and of course, again, we'll talk about that on the weekend follow-up. As far as if you should install iOS 18.2.1, well, definitely if you are having issues, as this should fix a lot of bugs, but we don't know specifically, again, what they've fixed. So I would expect it to be a better experience, but again, you're going to have to give it a few days to see what it's like. As far as the overall storage after installing this, let's take a look, as Apple Intelligence, if you have that, actually takes up a good amount. So if we go to iPhone storage, go to the bottom here, you'll see we have iOS taking up a little bit less storage this time around at 17.82 gigabytes, 11.99 for iOS, and 3.18 for Apple Intelligence. And then system data, this goes up and down, but I'm only at one gigabyte. But again, this can vary. It can go up to 60 gigabytes if needed. But in general, it seems to be a little bit better. And the phone is staying nice and cool. Now, as far as iOS 18.3 Beta 2's release, well, based on what we've seen in the past, I would expect it as soon as tomorrow. Today, we had iOS 18.2.1. So typically the following day or throughout this week, we can expect iOS 18.3 Beta 2. I would expect some updates as far as maybe some Siri enhancements with Apple Intelligence, possibly some other features as well. When it comes to the public release of that version, well, we could see it at the end of January or early February. We don't really know 100%, but last year they released this pretty quickly. We only had a couple beta updates, then an RC, then the public release. So we could see a similar release this year toward the end of the month at this point. Of course, iOS 18.4 should round up all the Apple Intelligence features as well. So we can look forward to that, and maybe we'll have additional updates such as iOS 18.2.2 if needed. Now, as far as the overall benchmarks, I did run them quickly on this device. You'll see it scored 3,495 for single core, 8,690 for multi-core. If we compare that with the previous ones, it's actually a little bit higher than we were with iOS 18.2. So a little bit higher, definitely a little bit higher on the multi-core compared to 18.2 that you'll see here. It just varied depending on when you actually took this, because sometimes it would go up and down. But it seems to be pretty great scores overall. And so that's everything with iOS 18.2.1. Again, I wish Apple would give us more details, but we'll figure it out on our own after a few days and see what they've actually fixed for sure and see how it's improved. I'd love to hear about your experience in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time. <laughs>